In this Debaco University video, I'm going to go over some of the timing of cannabis compounds and how they're accumulated within the cannabis plant. All right, let's get into timing of cannabis compounds here, looking at it from a scientific standpoint. So first off, some data here. If you want to look at the original data, always try to include that. And that is here at the Cornell Hemp Association. They have a great little um, information that they've posted online. The link is right here. And I'll be pulling some of the highlights of that data here. It's from a 2019 CBD cultivar trial. So they were comparing total potential CBD THC over time, uh, and they have their kind of data presented right here. So total CBD and total THC accumulation curves for the 30 cultivars that they tested, and here's the color, and here are the cultivars that they chose to use. Most cultivars accumulate high levels of cannabinoids by week two or three, and the top 10 centimeters of shoot tips were sampled, and cannabinoids were qualified using an HPLC, um, high pressure liquid uh, chromatography. Across most, most cultivar studies, the CBD and THC trends seem to be similar, but there are a few standouts. So when we look at the data in general, we're kind of seeing this general trend or this increase here overall of our kind of um, cannabinoids here. And this is looking at CBD and this is looking at THC. However, there are a few standouts, and I tried to highlight those here on our next uh, slide right here. So two cultivars uh, listed here peak their CBD levels before THC reaches the maximum levels. However, what I want you to realize is that both of these produce THC levels above the federal limit of 0.3% threshold. So if we're looking at THC, this dotted line represents the federal threshold of 0.3%, and we can see just about all these go well in excess of that. However, the two that I'm highlighting here, I tried to put in yellow, and we can see that our CBD versus THC, towards the end here, you know, looking at weeks, you know, say uh, seven and eight or so, six, seven, and eight, we can see there's definitely a dramatic increase in the THC levels while the CBD levels remain the same, if not trend slightly downward overall. Uh, so that's just important to remember that if we're playing very close to that line of 0.3, waiting to the very end in some cultivars might cause the crop to go, what's called hot, or go above that theoretical th threshold. Now these examples, they were above it even before that point, um, so it doesn't really apply to this situation, but just again, something else to consider when you're looking at choosing a cultivar and knowing what it might be producing, uh, trying to maximize your CBD production, but may go above that THC threshold. Now most, as I said, will exceed that 0.3% total THC. However, this is notable in some cultivars. It is possible for THC levels to increase in the later weeks into flower. So again, this is where choosing that cultivar, knowing your cultivar, is very important. Uh, not in this case, but in other cultivars, this may be close to the 0.3% threshold, and this could be a notable observation. And that's kind of where you're taking the cannabis plant and saying, are you in the hemp plant category or are you in the marijuana plant category? Now, another research article here, uh, welcome to take a look at, looks at the accumulation of bioactive metabolites in cultivated medical cannabis. Again, summary provided here. So what are uh, cannabinoids accumulation? Where are they exactly accumulated? Well, cannabinoids are synthesized and accumulate in unfertilized female inflorescence, which is basically the flowers. Specifically within those flowers, the trichromes that are found on the surface of the flower and also the leaves. The trichomes are these small white structures that we see right here, and we can see definitely uh, excessively produced right here. These other white structures here are called the stigmas. We're looking at the trichomes being these small uh, white kind of structures here that look like they have like a little like mushroom type head on the top. So what's the kind of schema for developing the cannabinoids? Now the cannabinoids we're talking about here could be uh, Delta 9 THC, could be CBD or CBC. Now we're seeing there's a lot of complicated kind of biosynthesis pathways, a lot of enzymes involved in genes and the pathways have been kind of isolated to kind of get an idea of where these are derived from. When we're looking at the very early on, this um, transferase, we're kind of looking at the kind of the starting molecule here would be CBGA. That's kind of where we're starting all this. The plant kind of produces that to synthesize the production from that particular compound. So once we have the CBGA, the plant then can produce the THC synthase, uh, CBDA synthase, or CB. CBCA synthase, and we're getting that next kind of step there. We're producing the THCA, CBDA, and CBCA. Now we then have the heat, 
or decarboxylation step to generate those final end products with also carbon dioxide given off. So based on the inheritance of the chemical phenotypes, the genes for THCA synthase, uh, CBDA synthase uh, are considered to be codominant alleles. What does that mean? That goes back to our uh, biology, basic biology. Codominant alleles. Well, alleles, you've got one chromosome from the male and one chromosome from the female. Uh, codominants mean they can both be expressed. One's not going to be dominant and recessive. They're going to be both expressed. So that's kind of an important note when we're looking at developing varieties or kind of looking at this pathway in more detail. The gene for CB CA synthase is, in, is an, an independent locus, so it's in a different location within the entire genome. However, based on DNA sequencing and analysis, one of the transcription expressed in marijuana and hemp samples, uh, multiple linked loci for the THCAS and TH, uh, sorry, and the CBDAS genes are proposed. So here we're having that even though these might be distinctly separate in our pathways, there could be linked as far as genetically. And that's important for looking at developing new varieties. There are published genomes for cannabis and the genetic diversity of the biosynthetic pathways of cannabinoids in both marijuana and hemp strains is under investigation. We're trying to better understand these particular pathways because some uh, Growers, some breeders might be looking at producing more CBD. Uh, how can we go about that uh, versus THC and staying below that uh, federal limit potentially? So if they all originate from the same molecule, how do we try to get the plant to select for this particular pathway? Because that's deemed to be advantageous. And then lastly, we have the kind of just the bioactive forms of the cannabinoids. So the bioactive forms of cannabinoids are produced following uh, a light or heat-induced decarboxylation reaction to generate the CBG, the delta-9 THC, the CBD, or ultimately the CBC. So all of these kind of are kind of getting into the specific pathways of the plant. Might be a little bit more kind of in-depth and complicated there, but I think it is kind of interesting just to kind of have an idea and appreciation that we have an original molecule, and then from there the plant is going through with enzymes and activating different pathways to produce these different compounds. So it's kind of it's great for looking at research going into the future, for trying to select one of these particular uh, cannabinoids over the other.